What's going on everyone, Metal Raymond here and welcome back to a brand new series. In this series we're going to be playing a Prime main account with the goal of trying to obtain a trimmed completion escape as quickly as we can. But we do have a few tiny little restrictions to make it more difficult. No trading from the other accounts or making use of alts. No donations from players, so just people giving me stuff. No gambling. No in-game in name. <laughs> No in-game donations unless purchased with money made on the account itself, so like 500 in names that I used to do on the other accounts, stuff like that. None of that. It's gonna be a completely fresh account and it must also prestige to heroic game mode when we, like, in order to finish it off, we either prestige to heroic before we get to the uh, elite comp or after, doesn't really matter. We just gotta get there somehow. So yeah. Uh, right off the bat in the background you will watch some footage playing by of me start getting the account started. I mainly focused on magic in the early run of the account. And making sure that I focused on doing slayer and dailies and getting as much equipment as I possibly could. Now, um, I did need like eventually like other combat stats and such, but I decided to just focus on magic at the start and only on magic. I did get prayers, so I could use protection prayers and stuff obviously. But uh, I did have a secondary goal in mind for which I wanted to stay a relatively low combat level. I made sure to do as many dailies as I could because it's very important you do those early game to get luck tokens, kata tokens, other stuff, you know, just the bare basics. You also get a decent amount of money for an early account from doing those dailies by, uh, well, quite a bit to say the least. It adds up very quickly. At some point I ended up buying an Ivan staff, but I completely forgot it needed a 60 attack or 50 attack to wield it, which kind of went against the plan that I had for the early account progression. So I just continued training, training, training as much Slayer tasks as I could. I did a bit of Soul Hunter in between easy tasks to get a little bit of points for the shop eventually so I could spend it on, uh, well, like Infernal Elixirs and things like that as well later. Most of the early game upgrades were pretty minimal, so to say, very cheap stuff like the Smoke Battle Staff, Curse Necklace, uh, they give great magic damage buffs when using the fire spells, at least the uh, Staff, and then the Necklace gives 10% magic damage as well. Alright, how is this for a uh, strange money making tip? <clears throat> I am looting the steel bars from bandits. Now I'm kind of mainly doing this because I want to get fast magic XP, you can burst them, kill them in groups, get more magic XP obviously. But apparently steel bars will sell for quite a bit. The only ones in TP at the moment are about 800k each. And that is mainly because steel titan pouches are worth about 10 mil each. Quite a hefty price, it's because a lot of people don't want to bother making them, but they do need them at stuff like Chasm Quaker. So I was thinking maybe this could be like a pretty decent one. Now I would highly recommend you have a fucking looting bag for this shit. Because I'm trying to figure out which ones are noted and which ones aren't, which is ass. You can just have it in your grand looting bag and it would be passive, but maybe something to look into in the near future. Alright, so with this new series I do want to go ahead and try to teach you guys as the viewers if you're planning to play Runex on like how to play and like what am I doing, why am I doing certain things. Um, and also in the future I want to do like loot from videos and all kinds of things with this series and with this account. Um, those are the things we're going to be striving for. So to start off with how I started training this account and what I did at this point was to aim for 20 achievements because you need 20 achievements to vote and voting can make quite a bit of money. The tickets are relatively expensive early game, so to say. So you can make a nice pretty penny from it, but you need to get 20 achievements. So we wanted to do as many things as possible that gave us achievements while also focusing on the daily tasks because they make a lot of money and they're just good to do. So for example, rock crabs, there's both achievements for rock crabs and it's a daily, so we start doing those. And from there, training magic up as much as we could because it allows you to get very high max hits very early game. Um, we just kept going for that and we started training Slayer, do Slayer tasks in between. We also did this during the Mayhem event, which will be over by the time this episode goes up. But I did want to go ahead and get the Mayhem Whip as quickly as possible, very strong item early game. So Slayer was very important early on because that's how you got the coins and with that we could buy some interesting items. We got other things like the Tome of Fire Eye, Smoke Battle Staff to boost fire magic, um, very useful early game like I said. 
And we also did other dailies like the skilling task to get some Keta tokens, speed up certain training and stuff. Uh, started running barrels at some point. Great drops overall because you get caskets, barrel items for rune coins. Emmy of the Damned is potentially a pretty uh, valuable drop. Elite barrel scroll sell for a lot. Just a lot of money potential altogether. Plus they have 100 HP each, which was 100 Mayhem coins per kill, so although the runs were a bit slow at this point in time, I did think it was worth doing it for the daily. Uh, I did miss the Impling daily sadly on the first day, um, was gonna make sure I trained Hunter for the second day to make sure that didn't have to happen again, because with one Hunter you cannot catch very many Implings. Went ahead and bought a pretty cheap augury scroll for 150 mil so I could unlock the prayer. Had to get my prayer up to 77 right after. Not too much work and then I went back to barrows now with a bit more accuracy. Completed a few runs, made a little bit of money, a few elite barrow scrolls which sell for quite a bit which was uh, pretty nice. And I've been stacking up the barrow items for rune coins at least for the time being. I also went ahead and bought the Mayhem Butterfly Net so that whenever we catch Implings in the Wilderness we can get a little bit of extra blood money as well as some more Mayhem coins. At this point in time I claimed some of my sold items and got myself a few lamps to get a few uh, Hunter levels at the start. But since we were still quite far away from the level for Red Chin Champas I decided I wanted a Falcon Glove so I could start catching them even at a lower Hunter level than the one required for them. Uh, it was a bit expensive though and we didn't have enough money for it so we went to Karazi Island ourselves to try and obtain one for I think it's 2500 sticks or 1500 sticks something like that. Um, I started off cutting trees and fletching them into trading sticks. Let me be the first to tell you don't fucking do that. It's incredibly slow, so not worth it but I didn't have the combat stats to just kill things so I had to find some alternative methods. Luckily for us, we actually managed to get a 50 Jade drop from an Earthly Impling. You get them uncut and you can actually exchange those for trading sticks. Quite a few at that. So I went off the island again, got my crafting level up and before going back, I also quickly finished the adventurer book, that blue little thing, which gives a few additional rewards for completing all of them. After that was done, we went back to Karazi, cut those Jade, traded them in. Uh, you can trade them in at the Mystic Statue Exchange on the island and quite a few sticks, I think it's like 50 per. It, it does cost a little bit of blood money, but very small amounts. Um, after that we got our Falcon Glove and we started catching Chin Champas. We had to get our Hunter level up to at least enough to catch like a good variety of the Implings so we can get our daily done relatively fast and not constantly run into Imps you can't catch. Shit's annoying. Um, the daily was doubled again two times in a row, so that was very, very nice. I really wanted to get those rewards, sack of, rich, or sack of tokens are really good and of course you get two dragon and two ninja implings that way, which could give a crest piece tree which is worth like around 2 bill if not more. After that we went ahead and went back to doing some dailies, also finally got enough achievements done to uh, buy my first decorative robe piece which was very nice, gives a plus one max hit, it ain't huge but it's a nice little untradeable item for sure. Uh, and yeah, continue doing dailies, uh, green dragons, fucking uh, experiments, barrows, all that stuff. Made a little bit of money from barrows drops, but nothing too crazy during this time period. But just keeping up the dailies for those cursed M boxes and everything around it. And that is the Chaos Druids daily done as well. So that is a chunky amount of uh, things we can sell for a decent price, I would say. Free little bonus tip for you guys if you're doing dragons early on, especially on an Iron Man. You can drink an elixir pool in anyone's house, so make sure you do one that has a grand elixir pool and you get an anti-fire effect for an hour. You can drink it every 12 hours I believe, if not every 24, but I think it's every 12. Uh, so you can at least do it like once a day where you get like an hour of anti-dragon effect. Very useful for things like green dragons or any kind of dragon for that matter if you want to do some KVD for boss points or some shit. It's an option, you know, just wanted to put that out there. But yeah, I mainly continued focusing on as many dailies as I could. That took quite a bit of time uh, since we don't have that many stats yet. But they are important. And then after that, I went ahead and, uh, you know, used my remaining money for a Narda rope. So we can get the full set, get a little bit of extra max hits and stuff from that. So that is pretty nice. And then we headed off to the Warriors Guild to get ourselves a little Dragon Defender. You get four more achievements in this place. Uh, I got 600 tokens at the start, so it didn't take me all that long in total to get. Oh man, I remember writing that down so I could calculate uh, 
when I got the Dragon Defender, but then I completely forgot about it anyway. Also finished this, uh, the easy Soul Hunter tasks, get as many uh, tokens from that as possible. And I bought 10 Brimstone Keys as well as a scroll to get an achievement for it. And the scroll is just so that if we do any Brimstone tasks, from this point on we get extra keys. Um, did some uh, chat duels as well on the side while working on skills to get more XP and luck tokens from that shop, but... Uh, over the last few days I've noticed shit ain't active, it can take forever to find fights, so if people are doing it then be my guest and get some points while you can, because the daily is pretty nice as well, but it can be quite rough to find people. Now we're gonna end it off with a little bit of live commentary for this video, boys. Alright, and a lot more dailies and other things later, also got one of the Fire Shades achievements now. I'm gonna go ahead and finish these last two off to get the 50 achievements, which will allow me to get both achievement ropes, and that is gonna be really nice because they're untradeable, they have a plus one max it, it's not great, but it's really nice for in the wilderness. So I need to buy a rigor scroll, because we already have augury, and then catch 62 more implinks, it's fine with me, I gotta get the daily anyway, and then I'll just catch some extra, get the 50, and uh, Around that time is going to be where we end the first episode. That is going to be uh, the foundations of this new series. And then in the next episode, we're going to move on to a few bigger things. Where we'll really start making some uh, more money. Like bigger amounts and things like that. So, really looking forward to that. But first, we're going to go ahead and finish this up. I'm not sure how much rigor costs. It should not be expensive. Honestly, I got like 20 on my group arm and I could drop trade literally instead of doing this, but I want to do everything, at least pay for it and stuff like that, you know, so no handouts, alt accounts don't exist, all of that stuff. So that is rigor unlocked, so that should be the achievement, what do you even get for that? A prize box and a prize key, or a crystal key I mean, nothing too crazy there. I do like the god items, gonna be nice for the wonder in the future and stuff. Um. And then uh, we need to go catch some implings. Alright, so I wanted to do a little bit of Hunter, get my level up a little bit before doing more implings. Because at the level I had, which was like 62, there was still quite a lot I couldn't catch. And last time I did it, I also found like ninja implings, couldn't catch it, can't catch dragon implings. Uh, you need 99 for lucky, so that is just not gonna happen. But I did end up getting a little bit carried away, I'm currently 83 almost 84, but I ran out of Kata tokens, so I think I'm gonna call it quits here for now and do the implings first. I can catch most of the things, at least at 84 if I get one more. I think I should be able to catch dragon implings at that point. So I should basically be able to catch everything I find except for luckies, which will speed up the achievement by quite a bit. And then on top of that, we can then um, hopefully pull some Kata tokens from the sack of tokens we get to uh, finish 85 Hunter and then 85 Hunter will be our 50th achievement. And then after that I just want to do some uh, dailies again, just get those over with. And then we'll continue in the next episode from that point onward. So a little bit to go, working on it, should be done by the end of the day for sure. Alright, this time I am going to use the butterfly net. I'm very low combat and I don't plan to go above level 20 wilderness. That way I can just instantly teleport out if someone shows up and I feel threatened. Because the, the net is risked at all times and I think it's worth like 4 bill or something. So that would be a bit of a waste to lose. Let's hope that doesn't happen. We get 10% more blood money while using it though. And like an increased chance of boxes or something? Oh no, no, completely unrelated. You get mayhem coins. Okay, never mind. I said nothing. So yeah, let's go ahead and catch them. It's nice to get a few extra mayhem coins doing this. And then at the same time some blood money, blood money sells for a decent price, so yeah, let's knock out this daily once more. Hey, look at this boys, our first ever dragon impling on the account. Gonna be a nice crest piece 2 or 3, no, 10 dragon legs, I mean that's still not awful, 100 rune coins, why not? But obviously crest piece would have been nice and hopefully we can get some of those in the future, I'll be doing this daily quite often probably, so... And of course, you know, when you do the daily, you get implinks as well, so... In time, I, I would have to check which crest piece is the expensive one. I'm guessing it's number 3. It's usually number 3, but it's been a while since I last checked, to be fair. Alright, let's see if we get some Kata tokens to finish 85 Hunter. No, but we do get a few mystical tokens. I don't know if that's gonna be enough, but... 
I'll try my best, and otherwise we get it with normal double XP tokens. Not a little, a little fury, sure, sure. We'll take it. I guess I'll uh, finish it off the long way. And then, you know, that's that, I guess. And there we go, ladies and gentlemen, 85 Hunter does the final one. I needed 50 achievements. This means we can also buy the next uh, Varric Buddy for more XP if we continue skilling. But most importantly for me, it means I can get my uh, decorative robes as untradeable gear. That is gonna come in very useful in the next episode where we'll continue our adventure. But uh, for now, this is gonna be the main setup. A lot more things will be explained in the next one and what the plans are, how we're gonna do it. Hope you really uh, enjoyed it up until now. I think we've done quite a bit for the first episode. I definitely just wanna focus on skipping a lot of like the fluff like watching me train fucking magic on doing dailies like I want to explain it to you guys and I want you guys to know what I'm doing and how I'm doing it and stuff without wasting 10 minutes of your time as to what I'm doing exactly because there's no real excitement going on yet you know it's it's fine it's just baby steps but we're gonna get there maybe Prime wasn't the best idea but I do think uh, allowing myself to do it on the slowest XP mode just you know expands the options in how we play the game in its entirety because we don't instantly get like max combat stats 99 slayer jump into that bosses blah 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 but take it a bit slower and see how we can make money along the way doing the more average things and at the same time i don't think uh iron man would suffer too much from it either but i mean i've done enough iron man content i believe <laughs> at this point where you can follow guides on that or just like overall gameplay on how i play through that but uh yeah Great progress so far, in my opinion. Almost a thousand total level, that's gonna help a lot as well. I also got one of the Runex Renegade thingies. That's one of them weird ones. Maybe it already claimed, I don't know. No, yeah, it did claim it, but oh, it's not nothing too great, to be fair. The 50 achievement one. Cool. So yeah, I can stop doing Hunter now. It's gonna benefit us quite a bit. And it definitely helped a ton with catching 35 implings. Went way faster now that I can catch basically everything. And the uh, potential dragon and ninja implings is very nice as well. So yeah, hope you guys enjoyed the first episode. Let me know if you guys have any tips or ideas. I'm planning on doing quite a bit of different things with this series as we go along. Such as like loot from videos. And really like trying unorthodox money makers. You know, like... How much money could we make on the Karazi Island if we did it for 10 hours, you know? And what different methods would we use on the island to make money there? And stuff like that. Things you might not think of instantly, but really playing a main account is going to allow me to explore those kind of options and see what else is there than grinding out your own items like I have been getting so accustomed to over the last few years, I guess. So yeah, let's go ahead and round it off here. I'll check you all in the next one, boys.